good evening everybody and uh, welcome to the video in this video i want to basically show you how i essentially structure uh, my python projects and uh, you know large large python code right so i want to talk about specifically source to target mapping in the last video i showed you a demo how to essentially uh, map uh, or how to essentially do source to target mapping right in python so let me just refresh your memory and then i'll walk you over the object oriented concepts right so here again very simple um, explanation we have a table called source a target and a mapping source holds the all the column that you would have in a json data for example just giving you a quick example as a re refreshing your memory say this is the source i want to transform this to something called customer id right right and maybe i want to do into float right maybe this is my transform right so i have a source and this is my target so i want to map my source to a target right how do we do that so essentially again we came up with the process right so source will hold all the information about the source table target will hold the information about the target table if the value is missing you, we also have a default value right what data type you want to convert and the mapping table is going to link um, both of them so that means it, the mapping table will tell you that um, uh, map the yellow into a green right so uh, again this is a 2 to 300 lines of code a large code right so just explaining you and refreshing your memory, right? So for example, in the JSON, we have a item called ID. I just showed you, right? You have an ID. So what we are saying is, hey, I want to map this ID into customer ID, right? Into customer ID. And here in my data, it's a string. I want to uh, map it into a float, right? So the mapping table tells us that, right? So mapping source one means take this data over here mapping destination one map it to this destination so the concept makes sense right simple right so uh, again and then i showed you a demo of course right so for example i'm just gonna run this quickly so hopefully you see what i'm trying to say of course if you observe we got converted into float i can now uh, simply change uh, items in the uh, in the target table and i can you know as you can see the data type does change the the key also changes right for example when uh, there is nothing there for example when uh, there is a none right uh, this will uh, replace by a default value all that is coming from the uh, is, is basically controlled from these right so how to write code right how to structure this massive code base right so i want to show you and walk you over the process so the way I did it, basically I try to identify some of the common modules, right? So I know I need a logging module. I know I need an, uh, an interface. So I know I need a database. So the database class, essentially, if you observe, I have a method called get data source target mapping. Again, uh, I am, uh, this means that this uh, over here, this method over here is going to query the database and it's going to retrieve all this information again it might be dynamo db it might be sql it doesn't matter the concept is important here so i have a method right and i'm using a property decorator the reason i'm using a property decorator because i'm not passing any arguments so i can simply call uh, the method right so for example i can call the method uh, if you observe self dot this i don't have to provide round brackets right it's a property decorator again back here then i have a method called get data by id which means uh, just to just to show you the source will have a id right so basically given an id i want to fetch this particular item right that's what this method does then i have a get method so the get method is responsible for fetching all the items from the source right that's what it does right um, so this is an interface which means uh, it's an abstract class you don't provide the implementation so if you observe my code carefully, here you can see here is an interface and it's an abstract class. You don't provide implementation. So any class that inherits, they need to provide implementation. So now I have standard across all my target mapping and source class, right? So uh, again, the source will inherit from an interface. The source will also inherit from the database because it has to fetch the data from the database, right? About the source, then it has to provide the implementation for all these methods, right? Uh, so really, really quick, I'll show you one of them. Again, source inherits from interface and a database. I have these three methods which I'm providing an implementation. Since it's an abstract class, I have inherited, I have to provide the implementation. The get method will get all the source data, Get uh, then we have get data by ID, 
this is gonna get the data gonna get the source data by a particular id so for example so given an id uh, it's gonna fetch all the data right so again see how i'm structuring the code that is what is important so if you observe on the top i have a logging module then i have an interface right which is an abstract class where um, any class that inherits will provide the implementation so here the target the mapping and the source class will provide the implementation now the database module uh, again it's the job is to fetch the data right um, now the client essentially interacts with the transform class observe carefully the squares that you see here the red square red means it's a private method and there is an underscore before the method name which means that this is a private method so the client or the user will only interact with the method called get transform data so how does the client use uh, if you observe um, again i want to show you uh, the client will pass in the you know uh, the json data uh, the transform class will read uh, you know the mapping the source the target will do all the rules check and then the job is to simply return the transform data that's it you know keep it simple for the clients uh, so that's that uh, other thing that i have is a json query class so as you know right we are going to store the mappings for example if i show you quickly so here if you see right dollar dot id that's the path of a uh, path for, uh, to to get towards the id so right so this is the mapping right or essentially the path right so the json query class takes a json path and a json data so given an input json and a json path the job of this class is to return the value inside a dictionary that's all it has to do so and if you observe i'm using a facade design pattern so my transform is a facade right and it essentially creates an instance of a target a mapping and a source so it's a design pattern right so if you observe my code here transform class in the constructor i'm creating the instance on line 146 147 148 the client interacts with get transform data and here where all the business rules um, are returned for example check the data type do the data type conversion uh, you know all these stuff are written observe how i'm giving uh, appropriate comments right um so that's that so i'm going to collapse that so if you observe before even writing the code it's important that you lay out a thought process what i'm explaining here is basically this is a big code right three to four hundred lines of code anytime you write code try to create a map or try to think of components so for a website you need a nav bar you need a footer and then you have a main area so similarly, when you write code, don't just go and start writing code. Think about, okay, what all modules I need? Oh, you know what? I need an interface. I need a database. I need a logger. I need a, a class for this. I need a class for that. Think about these modules. Use a plant UML. Draw your UML on a high level. Think, start thinking about what methods you would have. Which method would be private? Which method would be public, right? This makes sense. And then start thinking of the design pattern. Okay, what design pattern I can use? Can I use a facade design pattern? Can I use a factory design pattern? Should I use a singleton design pattern? Do I need an abstract class? Do I need an enum? Start laying your components and then start joining your components and then create a map in your brain. Once you have a map, then start writing code. It's because it's gonna be very easy because you know the method. All you gotta do is just gotta write the business logic or the application logic inside that particular method. Uh, thank you so much. And if you observe one thing common when you write code, every code will need error handling. Every code will need logging, right? So why not use a design pattern to do that? Maybe inheritance or a decorated design pattern. So anytime you want to do, simply decorate the function and automatically that functionality is added. So again, this entire code, again, um, source to target mapping, right? The entire UML, and 230 lines or 220 lines is there on my GitHub section. Uh, I'll show you quickly. So if you come here, here is the UML. Here is the table that, that I essentially explained. Um, again, the only thing that I haven't connected, again, the database, right? Uh, ideally, this will come from a database, right? I'm essentially mimicking that 
I'm fetching this data from a database. Again, this is the data structure that I'm using a dictionary and I have a key here, right? So easily I can go to source, destination and mapping and I'm gonna fetch this data. Again, doesn't matter, it's a DynamoDB or a SQL or whatever that is. What, see, see how I'm essentially laying out all these classes and, 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 and stuff, right? So I hope you did enjoy a overview here on how I am essentially organizing these classes, how I'm organizing um, big Python projects, you know, large code base. Always try to think in terms of package, modules, and then start writing code. Uh, I hope this did help you. Um, and if you need, do revise your concept on design pattern, for example, singleton, facade, factory. These are some very basic common design pattern and decorative design pattern, of course. There are much more. These design pattern will allow and help you to write efficient, better code. And of course, as I said, when you wanna change things, it becomes much more easy because you exactly know which module to go and where to change. Thank you so much. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the demo, the code, and, and an overview. If you have question, list your question, and I'll be very happy to help you out. Thank you so much, and I'll see you guys next time. The only thing that I gotta do is connect this to a database, the source and the mapping, uh, the source target and the mapping, and then I'm all set. I can use these classes uh, again, right? Thank you, and I'll see you guys in the next video.